Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Do you want to build a snowman? Why do women take so long to get ready? Is this movie scientifically accurate? All this and more on this episode of Dory Story Time. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Story Time. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co host and his father, Craig. And just to quickly answer those questions no, because they're women, and no. Yeah, well, how would you know? Are you a scientist? Anyway. So this week, we're starting our Christmas themed ideas. No. No. We don't do like four Christmas ones no. every It's just this is going into Christmas this week. Is the the episode so before this Christmas. This is our Christmas episode that we do every year. We've done Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Santa's, Santa's Sleigh, Sleigh and Krampus. And, yeah, Over the yeah. years, we've done a few. This is Jack Frost. Because why not do a Christmas movie that's not specifically Santa is a killer? Like, that seems to be a general a theme. theme. Yeah. Or Santa's or someone theme dressed as Santa. Helper. Or someone dressed as Santa is a killer, like in... What was the one we did last year? No. Uh, I'll, no. What was that one? I don't remember what we did last year. The one where the guy drove off in the flying van. Yeah, I don't remember. Black Christmas? No. No? That's the new one that was a remake. Is a remake. Yeah, what, what, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Not really the point. You can figure that out and tell us <laughs> no, in the we... comments section below. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to hit... Hit like that subscribe, subscribe button, button and bro fist and or the something. bells I don't know for anymore. the notifications. And oh wait, this isn't goddamn YouTube. I mean, we'll probably <laughs> end up seeing this on YouTube, but it's not made for YouTube. No. If you're watching this on Fact TV, press that subscribe button. And when it doesn't work, it's because you're retarded and thought there was a subscribe button. <laughs> you said the racist retard word. Yes, because there's a race of retards. What? Yeah. It's anyway, racist. Anyway, so the basic premise is there's a murderer. His name is Jack Frost. And that is his name in the movie. Then he gets caught by a cop. And As then... he's being transferred to death row, where apparently in this movie they're just going to kill him that night because that's how it works. There's not well, yeah. years if of drawing If you're already out. throwing away... All sense of life as no, we know it. No, they need to make this movie. movie more realistic. So, anyway. Yeah, right. There's an accident with a toxic waste truck, and instead of giving him ninja powers or, it, you know, making him blind and solving, you know, the problems of, you know, Hell's Kitchen. Right? He gets uh, turned into snow. He gets turned into snow, but he's still a killer, so he kills as snow. That's basically the premise. Yeah, oh yeah. It's Shocker in winter. That's the one where the guy got electrocuted and became electrical. I haven't seen that one. I, okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's the basic premise, so let's... Uh, Roll that trailer, Colin. Yeah. One cold night, science and evil collide. on the loop. 
tools. We hadn't even tested the acid on an amoeba, let alone a human cell. This is a disaster. Look, I just saw something that doesn't belong in this world, and it's out there killing my friends. Now tell me what it is. Jack Frost. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. so it really didn't give too much away. But, but it definitely lets you know what the plot is. Uh, and it shoes you away if this isn't your kind of movie. Yeah, I mean, this is not a <clears throat> to be taken serious. It's definitely a comedy horror. Um, the horror is horrifying in spots, but it's definitely not. It's a it's comedy. Purposely hokey. Yeah, like. You know, if you like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and stuff like that, this is that type of film. Right. Like, they had, like, $4 and some pocket lint, and they said, Let's you know, whatever. Um, anyway, uh, before we get into the behind-the-scenes stuff, or the meat and beef, as you like to call it, because mm. you're a moron. Yeah. And it just stuck. Uh, yep. Let's get paid. You know how it is. We got to get paid for this show. Yeah, we get fat stacks of cash. And we get that by advertising for actual sponsors that really exist. And uh, that's why we never do the same sponsors twice, and they always seem to have something to do with the film. Yeah, I don't know. Because they're real. Yeah. yeah and yeah, not yeah. satirical in any way. I don't even know what that word means. I'm not smart enough. Somehow I do believe that. No, I know what it means. <laughs> Ass? Um, but this week... Gory Story Time is brought to you by My Little Toxic Chemical Playset. Would you like superpowers to flow through your veins? Whether you're a good person looking to stop evildoers or an evil killer looking for revenge, My Little Toxic Chemical Playset is for you. Just surround yourself with what you would like the power of and pour our specialty blend chemical mix onto your skin. Voila! You will have more power than responsibility. That's My Little Toxic Chemical Playset, available at Malwart, Greenwalls, and Bullseye stores. Actually, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Could you Looks please? like we've only been brought to you by one thing today. <laughs> uh, and by the snow-blowing ladies. Are you sick of shoveling? Do you want a cheaper alternative to the high prices plowing services, high priced plowing services in town, then call the snow blowing ladies. Did you wake up to find your car stuck in the snow? Call today and one of our ladies will give you a quick snow blow job. These professionals probably already service most of your neighbors. So why not let them service your needs as well? The snow blowing ladies promise to uh, promise that no one else will come faster or charge less when they snow blow you. So call snow blowing ladies today for half off the price of your first time by using our code GSTBJ. <laughs> That's why they don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think they would be happy with the fact we read exactly what they wanted us to read. Yeah. It was their copy. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the behind the scenes. Okay, so... This was Shannon Elizabeth's first acting role. And for those who don't know, she, because, you know, it, she was more known in the 90s, Shannon Elizabeth was Nadia, the hot exchange chick from, yeah, I know. More known in the 90s. 
Well, you don't get much further from out of the 90s. Okay. But I'm saying, like, it was, her, her big hit was American Pie as right. the hot foreign exchange student. And a little bit in, like, the early 2000s with Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah. But her biggest thing was being in American Pie. Um, this movie was shot in 18 days, which comes back in other facts that make you go, wait, what? Mm. We'll discuss uh, when we get there. This movie was shot on short ends. I don't know what the hell that means. Me either, but they put it there. Uh, Writer-director Michael Cooney did the voice of the man who tells the story of Jack Frost over the opening credits. Mm. The movie was shot in the winter during a drought year when there was no snow on the ground. According to actor Scott McDonald, the temperature went as high as 70 degrees. Foam and cotton swabs had to be used as substitutes. So... 70 degree winters. We're from Vermont. I yeah, I don't know. Cannot relate one. to that at all. Um, the stunt sequence with Sam and Jack Frost falling out a window and into the back of a pickup truck were done in a single take. Was done in a single take. Yeah. Um, one actor who read read for the role of Jack Frost pulled a knife at his audition. I mean, he was trying to play a serial killer. Yeah, but. It's the way to do it, right? I mean, he took a stab at the role. Ah, flame yeah, pun. Was... Uh, Writer-director Michael Cooney drew storyboards for the whole film. Okay, that's not a fact to be necessary. You know who makes storyboards for their films? Everything Marvel does. Oh, wait, movies! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird? Uh, this film was initially going to be directed by Rennie Harlan with a $30 million budget. Would have been a very different movie. Would have been a more expensive movie. Well, yes, but I think the snowman wouldn't have looked like he had oven mitts for hands and... Um, they were probably actually oven mitts. Anyway, uh, writer-director Michael Cooney first got the idea for the story in 1989. Yeah, it went something like this. It's snowing. Oh, my God. I'm gonna build a snowman. Oh, what if he was a killer? You know what, F it. I'm not gonna even bother making a snowman. I'm just gonna think about one. <laughs> mm. That's how that went. Probably. Uh, or <laughs> Originally, there was going to be more than one rubber snowman made for use in this movie. Okay. According to actor Scott McDonald, the temperature reached up to 70 degrees. Didn't we do that? Yeah, yeah. we did. Okay, Causing them to part. use fake snow. You know, we gotta, like, check to make sure that there's not all these duplicate facts. Like, it's just a reworded exact other fact. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> um, the movie was chosen to be part of the famous German... Schlesfaz series. Schlesfaz, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, it was aired December 2016 on the German TV station Tele5. That word I messed up earlier is a German abbreviation meaning the worst films ever. In that series, two hosts presented the whole film and made fun of it. According to director Michael Cooney, the movie was filmed in 1993 through 1994 due to issues with financing. Didn't it say 18 days? Yeah, so there Unless were, they were like, at the end, at the of, end December, of December. Like, it was winter, so that was But due to issues with financing, he says it wasn't completed until 1996. Okay, 93 to 96? That's more than 18 days. I, I mean, unless it was like three days in 93, eight days in 94, and then in 96 they came back for like another five or whatever it is. No. Uh, and then there's one more fact that you doesn't make to, any sense. So well, it we're makes not sense if you Google the name of the person. No, even then, I'm kind of confused as to why he has any no, connection. Let's read to it this. anyway. You know what? Let him Google. Yeah. Uh, one of George Price's favorite films, this movie, the uh, comedy horror was jointed with a early comedy horror, Ice Cream Man, 1996 as one of his favorite films. Now, Ice Cream Man was made by the same company. They also did one called Uncle Sam, which at some point we have to watch. Now, if you do a quick Google a search. Uncle Sam, 
Yes, this man is a scientist, genetic scientist who became a scientific journalist, and he, he loves the accuracy he, he of doesn't review movies, splicing he humans. He is no longer a person that exists. Because what? all of the pictures were in black and white. That doesn't... No, he doesn't exist anymore. Anyway. So, yeah. So, if you want to do a deep dive on whoever the hell George Price is, go ahead. He liked this movie. It's that one was of his bad. top two favorites, and his other top two favorite was another movie by the same company of the same quality. Right. Anyway. So, uh, what was your favorite? Or do you want to start with least favorite? Least favorite. We'll all start right. with least favorite. Because that one was a bit easier. Now, with all of the things that I could pick on this movie about, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go with the... They made him a rapist. And I did not like that. that okay. Was that was messed up, and they shouldn't have. So you're taking the bold stance of being anti-rape. Yes. Yes, I know I'm, like, one of the only people, but... Hold on. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? Forget about that. It was awesome that he... <laughs> no, that's not what I was saying, but good job. You, t you know, hot take right there. Yeah. Um, my least favorite part was the fact that everybody was mad at the kid <clears throat> because the bully got his head removed. And, like, everyone was like, what did you do? And he's like, the snowman did it. Well, first of all, that, is, that does sound crazy, but there was a group of bullies threatening to harm a smaller child, and they're like, he cut off our friend's head because they didn't see the snowman do it. And nobody went, really? Like, 10th graders who there was five of you attacking a, like, nine-year-old? He cut off one of your heads. Like, nobody seemed to point out that that didn't seem likely. I just didn't like that they immediately jumped on, yeah, why did you remove the bully's head who was twice your size and there was a bunch of them? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, some stories don't hold water. Mm. Like this one. <laughs> I mean, there's only so far I can just... You know, suspend my disbelief. And the idea that a nine-year-old is going to beat up, you know, older bullies that there's multiples and remove one of their heads. When it's not like he was, you know, Deadpool with martial arts skills, you know? Mm. Anyway, what was your favorite scene? Um, my favorite scene was probably when one, of the the <laughs> one of the hopiest. One of the hopiest scenes. Um, What's that? was when they found out that the kid, the kid also basically saved the day, right? Because they were like, ah, oh, what did you put in the cookies? Well, it, they set that up earlier with the kid liked to make stuff for the family, for them to eat. And they didn't supervise him and he would just put whatever he wanted into the food. That's important because that's where this pays off. Yes, so basically, Accidentally, a, some of the food he cooked touched the snowman, and the snowman started burning. And they said, little boy, what did you put in the food? And he said, I put antifreeze in the food so you guys wouldn't get cold. Luckily, they didn't eat the cookie. They dropped it on the snowman and then went, wait. Anti That's the answer. Will remove the snow? <laughs> and so they put him in a they puddle of antifreeze. They filled the back of a truck with antifreeze and then and that wrestled him does. into the back of the truck. <laughs> it's so good. It really is. I mean, it is what it is. It really is just what it is. Um, my favorite scene was probably, I don't know, uh, I, I guess when, uh, right before th your least favorite part. Yeah. When Shannon Elizabeth is, you know, getting in the shower and 
Don't let the trailer fool you. There is no nudity in this movie. There just isn't. No, they didn't have enough money. <laughs> no, they had enough money because no one knew who she was and she probably would have, you know, because she was right about 18, 19 <clears throat> at the time, so she could have. They just didn't have nudity in it, which is fine. Like, they don't have to, but for a schlocky movie like this, you almost kind of expect they would. Yeah, with, with a trailer like that, that's misleading. But the part that I'm talking about is right before he forms back into Jack Frost and uh, rapes her to death. Because I'm not going to say that's my favorite part. That would be really horrible. But when she's laying there, one of the best special effects was when the water she was laying in suddenly just went and turned into like frozen and it was just snow and she was like stuck in the bath water turned into snow. I, I thought that was a pretty cool effect the way it looked. Out of all the hokey effects, that one actually worked. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, definitely do watch this movie. It is free on Tubi. We're going to give Tubi a plug here. Yeah, because why not? They it's a free streaming awesome. service. They do stop for commercials once or twice, but it's completely uncensored as far as any of the movie's yep. language or whatever. So, And this movie is absolutely awful and i loved it yeah and i think that if you're watching this show if you like b movies this is the type of movie they were parodying in uh chillerama that we also liked yes they were like making fun of this type of movie but also i think that they respect these movies oh yeah yeah if you like attack of the killer tomatoes toxic avenger um yes you know sharknado then this is definitely a horror movie for you it is yes. definitely funny, it is definitely gruesome in parts, and it is definitely a B-movie with awful acting. And it does have a like 19-year-old Shannon Elizabeth removing her clothes. You don't see anything, but even from the side, it's still 19-year-old Shannon Elizabeth. It's worth watching. And there's a sequel, which is also on Tubi. In which the family that kills him goes on vacation to like the Bahamas or somewhere tropical and for the next Christmas. So he follows them there to still exact his revenge because you know, snowman in the at the beach is a thing. Yeah. You know, Olaf said it best. Yeah. So all the stuff. Oh, what? Shoot. Oh yeah. Rate it. Rate it. So on a scale, on a scale of, of one, one to 10, 10, what would you rate this movie? For what it is, I'm going to go with a seven and a half. It's not the best B movie. No. But it is good. It is great for what it is. It kept me, I'm not going to say interested, but enjoying it. You were interested. The entire time. If you just told me the story. It kind of sounds super lame, and I wouldn't want to hear about it. But, but they did it in a way. Do you want to watch the sequel? I'm going to watch the sequel. Thank you. That brings me back to my God blessed point. So my point is, I'm going to give it an eight because they kept me laughing the entire time. All right. And that's what I expected going into this, anyways. So. All right. So uh, seven and a half for me, eight for you. <clears throat> now, the stuff on the side of the screen. Yeah. That. It works this week. Okay. So, Fact TV Channel 8. You can watch this show, Fact TV Channel 8, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. You can email us at gorystorytime at yahoo.com. I can't <coughs> seem to log into it, so I won't receive your email. Correct. You can like us on Facebook. You can like Fact TV on Facebook. If you did, you're watching this live. Hi. And if you didn't and you're watching us live, how? <laughs> Um, yes, you can go to www.factdate.com. You can also uh, check out my YouTube channel, which is Juggalo Jakes, all one word. Oh, it's got case. episodes of this show, episodes of my old show, Daddy Issues. It's got music videos. It's got sketches, etc. It's got our 100th episode, which has our roast of each other, in which I said that your birth was worse than 9-11. Spoiler alert. And uh, you can also follow us on the Twitter. The Twitter. 
I'm at Jason T. Jiggs, capital T, capital J, capital T, wait, <laughs> capital J, capital T, capital J, I know how to spell my name. And I'm at Craig Jakes, all lowercase, all one word, and I guess that's it for this. So week. until next time, I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father. Craig. Merry Christmas. Yeah, have a Merry Christmas and sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.